What's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. Thanks for tuning in. Today in this video guys, we're going to talk about Thorchain, ThorFi, and what does it mean for the whole ecosystem. Yes, I know Luna is here. UST is here. Like what the snap? This is sauce. Um, I'll show you, I'll show you guys what it looks like. Luna, UST, yes, they are here. 17% and Luna is like 4%. But we'll see what happens. Should have a lot of trading volume in my opinion, so that will boost the yields as well. And dude, like Luna is the fifth deepest pool already. Like that's fast. Like that's super fast. Uh, anyways, let's go over ThorFi. Uh, I, I made a little visual diagram to help you guys digest and understand it. Um, it's a little chicken scratchy, but we'll get into it. So here are the main things you need to understand with ThorFi. First, ThorUSD. What is it? Well, it's an algo stablecoin pegged to USD. It has the similar mint and burn mechanics of the Terra Luna and or the Luna UST relationship. Lending allows you to borrow USD from blue chip LP positions. So this could be like uh, ETH Rune or BTC Rune or BNB Rune, just different positions with 0% interest, no liquidations, and as low as 100% collateralization ratio. This actually moves back and forth, so it's not always going to be 100%. As in, if there's more borrowers than lenders, that collateralization ratio actually juices up. But if there are more lenders than borrowers, that actually goes down. And it's just like a teetering scale. And the reason why is because the borrowers are the people who deposit those LP tokens. The lenders are the people who are supplying the native assets, which are like your native Bitcoin, your native ETH, native BNB, etc. And then you have Thor Savings, which is an interest bearing account with single asset exposure. So your Thor Savings are going to be for the guys who are depositing native Bitcoin, native Ethereum, native BNB, without having to have a permanent loss because it's not going to be paired to room. Now, let me go ahead and show you guys a little sketch pad I had um, or made. <laughs> Man, this is bad uh just so you guys can see like the flow and then we'll go ahead and describe the uh actual breakdown and then we'll go back into the flow to sum it up so as you can see here we have the lp position so this would be like your bitcoin uh rune or your eth rune it would be all these guys now if you go on thor swap you can see they're all earning a yield 24 percent, 24 percent, 68 percent let's just do the bitcoin one for example this 24% APY, if I deposit my LP position, I sacrifice this APY. This now goes to the savings vault. As you can see, APY percent goes to the savings vault. This is paid out to the lender. So this is the guy who deposits Bitcoin, Ethereum, whatever. And that percentage I just sacrificed goes to them. So keep that in mind. Now, when the lender deposits the Bitcoin and Ethereum, Rune is minted. Yes, this creates inflation on the system. So this Rune minted is our debt. So if there is any amount minted, so it, let's say there's a billion dollars worth of Bitcoin that's deposited. Well, there's a billion dollars worth of Rune that is minted. So this minted Rune is now a debt. So this has to be repaid. Now, how does it get repaid? Well, when you burn Rune, you mint Thor USD. Remember these LP providers, they're depositing their LP positions. They're sacrificing their yield. They're going to open up a loan. <laughs> they're going to borrow against it and they get a bunch of USD. This Thor USD is created from burning Rune. So if I burn $1,000 worth of Rune, $1,000 worth of Thor USD is minted. This Thor USD, I can either take my Thor USD and put into a savings vault. Yes, they will have a Thor USD savings vault. Or I can simply just buy more rune and just re-loop this junk if I wanted to um, and put it into the LP. So again, let me sum it up. LPs deposit over here. They sacrifice their APY, which is this right here. This goes to the savings vault, which then goes to the lender which pays out the percent to the guy who deposits Bitcoin, deposits Ethereum. Now, when they deposit Bitcoin and Ethereum, remember, it's paired 50-50 with Rune. So this is where the Rune is minted. This is our debt. 
And this is instantly repaid usually because so many people on these LP positions being able to get a hundred percent collateralization ratio is no brainer. Why is that? There's no liquidations. Why is there no liquidations? Because it's paid instantly. Remember. So if we go over to the LP positions, people understand this concept. If I deposit rune and Ethereum LP position, and let's say it's worth $10,000 and I open up a loan for $10,000. Let's say the room price is $5 at that point. Well, I just cashed out. I basically locked in my downside. If it moonshots and goes crazy to the moon, well, I just repay that loan of $10,000 and I have these LP tokens that are worth a ton of money. But if it goes to zero, well, I already cashed out. I got my $10,000. I don't have to repay it, whatever, who cares? But remember, when you mint that $10,000, that goes to burn the rune, which the rune is repaid by burning it. So you're automatically, the, the loan is basically going to be repaid instantly the way this model is set up. Because on the lender side, they deposit the assets, the rune is minted, but the rune is burned because you got these guys who want this 100% collateralization ratio because again, they realize that if I deposit my LP tokens, they're worth $10,000 now, I cash out, I get my 10,000 bucks. If it goes to $50,000, okay, I'll repay my $10,000. Now I got $50,000, let's go. So if it goes to zero, well, I don't repay the loan, like whatever, forget it, get off me, man. I have my $10,000, so I'm happy. So now you kind of are understanding the flow, I hope. Um, let me go and go into the uh, Twitter post that I made uh, just so we can see a little more of the summary. So Thor USD, Algo Stablecoin, LP tokens as collateral, 100% loan to value based on the amount of people who deposit into the savings vault and people who deposit into the lending vault. So that's like a little teetering scale, I guess you can say. Uh, fixed rate savings vaults. So this is most likely going to be for the Thor USD pool. Um, so keep that in mind. And they did mention they can, they will subsidize some of the pools in the beginning for bootstrapping. No impermanent loss. This isn't specifically a part of ThorFi. This is just a part of the ThorChain uh, ecosystem if you're doing an LP. Um, and I guess you can say the uh, impermanent loss would be on the uh, saving side. Like if I deposit Bitcoin, like one Bitcoin, I'll get one Bitcoin back. There's no impermanent loss in that fact. Whereas normally on ThorSwap, if you come over to these pools and you decide to add liquidity to any of them, if I deposit Bitcoin like this, it's going to sell 50% to root. So there is a chance for impermanent loss in that scenario. And then zero interest loans, uh, like we mentioned in there. So it's pretty saucy. There's also a video down here um, where Chad is basically talking about the uh, inflationary supply. He's actually approaching that and saying, look, this is what the inflationary supplies. It actually creates a net burn. So some inflation is actually creating more burn. I would highly recommend you guys watch this video. Actually, if you wanted to start at the minute 20, 50, um, I'll leave a link in the description below to this Twitter thread. Just go to section nine. You'll be able to see it there. Check out this video. Start it at the 20 minute or 20 minutes and 50 second mark. And it'll basically say the net minting of 9,000 rune actually leads to 20,000 rune being burned. So keep that in mind. Remember, to mint Thor USD, you must burn room. And here's the hedging position I talked about right here. Um, but why would an LP want to forfeit their yield for a loan? Well, if it goes to zero, they already cashed out in stables. If it 100Xs, well, you can simply repay your loan and realize that position. It's pretty saucy. So let's go and address the Thor USD savings vault. The Thor USD is actually going to get a percentage of this APY that's sacrificed from these LPs. So the BTC and ETH position, they are not getting the full entire APY. Some of that is going to be sacrificed. So do keep that in mind. So like if this is 24%, this doesn't go fully and directly to BTC and ETH, but they will get somewhat of a yield. Um, so the other amount will actually go to the vaults for the uh, Thor USD savings vault. And here's a little bit of a screenshot just explaining like the uh, current income stream. Normal L1 swaps and ARBs. This was the original stream. Now, this is for LP providers. Obviously, you have some incentivized as well. But here's the new income streams that come out of ThorFi and the Sense program. 
First is the Mint, which is the Arv on the asymmetric rune add. The Redeem, which is the Arv on the asymmetric rune withdrawal. There is a uh, percentage withdrawal. Um, I'll show you what that looks like real quick. So if I wanted to uh, go to the swap and I wanted to do uh, Bitcoin for, let's do Synth. I just spelled that wrong. BTC. Here we go. So here's the synth Bitcoin. If I wanted to do one to one right here, you can see I receive 99 or 0.996. Now, if I go from the, let's say 0.996 back to the regular BTC, now it's 0.992. And if this keeps arbing, a percentage of that Bitcoin is actually going to the LP providers. So that is where a percentage of it's going. That's an additional revenue source. Now, I know you're saying like, oh man, well, I'm an LP, I don't like giving up money. Well, you can see giving up some money creates new and additional money. Then you also have the swap moving from L1 to Rune or vice versa. So this is basically the same thing as a swap because technically what's happening on the back end when you're swapping is when you swap out one synth Bitcoin to the native Bitcoin, it's actually burning that synth to mint regular Bitcoin. So it's just a, a UI improvement, so it's kind of cool. Then you have synthetic swaps. So these are um, the swaps that happen in between synths. So if I wanted to swap a synth Bitcoin to a synth rune, there are some fees involved in this, and a percentage of those fees are actually going to the income revenue of the protocol. Something else to keep in mind. And then you also have, well, simply the revenue source of when someone withdraws their liquidity. There is a uh, percent of slippage in that, and that also goes. So as people enter, withdrawal, so you see this slip. This slip is always the fee that's going to be paid out. The reason why there is a fee, because when you deposit, this is for the asymmetric at least. Um, if I deposit one Bitcoin, some of it is sold into Rune. So there's that automatic swap on the back end, and a percentage of those fees are going to the protocol. So those are different revenue streams that you can see just from like these little tweaks and uh, what ThorFi is doing and the ThorChain ecosystem in general and what's happening out of this. So also, like I mentioned, the savers earn the yield from the mint and redeem fees plus some subsidization. So this is what I was referring to with the uh, subsidization. So these are the uh, different fees uh, that are actually going to go to the revenue to fund the Thor USD vault. It'll have a similar layout as Anchor Protocol. You deposit and you earn a yield, that type of thing. They're actually trying to make a fixed rate savings. So a couple of interesting facts I want to note as we close this video is the price oracles. I know a lot of people talk about liquidations, like they accidentally get liquidated on, I don't know, uh, let's say Aave or Screen Finance or any of these other protocols um, because they use a oracle. The oracle they use is Chainlink. And the price oracle for ThorChain is actually interesting. Um, it's taking the medium price of the USD compounded using anchor pools. So these are already on ThorChain. So the anchor pools they use are USDT, USDC, BUSD, and UST. So they're actually taking an aggregated position of these pools already deposited into the vaults. So they aren't re relying on a third party oracle. I mean, this doesn't really matter in this situation since there are no liquidations, but that is something to keep in mind. Also, one other thing I want to mention is the deterministic rune value and speculative multiplier. Rune at a minimum, bare bone minimum, it always trades 3x of the value of the deposited assets. So if there's a billion dollars in the protocol, the rune market cap has to be $3. And the reason is due to tokenomics. The nodes actually have to put up two times the value of whatever asset is deposited. So two plus one is three. Now this is bare bone minimum. There's always a speculative multiplier. In fact, the lowest it's ever been has been about 3.4. The highest it's ever been has been a 20X. Now let's put some numbers on this. What's the current TVL in the protocol? Well, as you can see here, the total liquidity right now is 399 million. Let's just call it 400 million. So with a 20X on that, that would put the Rune market cap at $8 billion. That's if it's trading at a 20X. Right now it's trading like a seven or eight X or something like that. Um, but that's how you can keep that in mind. Like as this liquidity juices, and if let's say the speculative multiplier goes to 20X, 30X, whatever, we'll see. Um, but bare bones minimum, it's a three X. So right now the fair value of Rune, if you do 400, 
million times three, the fair value is about a $1.2 billion market cap. It's currently trading at about a three because it has a speculative multiplier. So those are some interesting facts to keep in mind. So as liquidity climbs, keep in mind, you can multiply this by the speculative multiplier, or you can just do the bare bones minimum to see if you're getting a uh, fair value price. Now it usually trades above the valuation. <laughs> um, as you can see here in the history of it, it's pretty crazy. Um, I also want to uh, do a quick calculator. Uh, let's just say, for example, 1% of the Bitcoin supply just enters Rune. Um, we'll go ahead and get rid of ETH and the other. Uh, so as you can see here, the deterministic value of Rune would be 85 bucks. That's crazy, man. Like seriously. Now that's out of three times. That's the deterministic value. It's trading at a 7.7 .7 to an 8x right now. So that's how you can put some uh, numbers on paper. That's if 1% uh, enters into uh, Thorchain. Now I know you're saying you're like, there will never be 1% of Bitcoin because they, they're Bitcoiners, they never do DeFi. Well, just take the market cap of wrap Bitcoin. It's actually over 1% of the Bitcoin supply. So FYI, fun fact, um, let's just say for example, all of them realize they're dealing with centralized trash. They wanna come play on Thorchain. Here comes the Bitcoin. All right, guys, um, that's a little bit about Thorchain, ThorFi, and what to look from it. If you guys want to pause the screen, you guys can uh, see like the little flow of it. What just happened? Um, if you guys want to kind of understand it a little more. Um, I know it's chicken scratch, but it still gets the point across. So you guys can kind of see how this flow works and what Thorfi is going to do. We're gonna do Proverbs chapter 16, verses 13. Kings take pleasure in honest lips. They value the one who speaks what is right. Be honest, be right, be true, be good. You guys can also catch me on tweeters at rentahomefast, like literally at rent a home fast.